Hey everybody, I'm going to show you a quick clip of me tagging my Shopify site for TikTok, Google Tag Manager, GA4, Google Ads, Snapchat, Bing, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Clarity, Hotjar, X, Instagram, Curtail. You'll see how it went. You've got mail. Houston, we have a problem. There you have it. I found a way to do this in a very simple way, right? So I'm, what I'm trying to do here is I'm passing a data layer with all of these platforms in it, and then I have a customized Google Tag Manager container that is already pre-configured to have the tags within that container, grab what it needs from that data layer, and then do, let's say, dynamic retargeting. So you'll have remarketing built in. For GA4, you'll have enhanced e-commerce built in. You'll have uh, enhanced conversions built in. User provided data for GA4. You'll have, um, uh, you know, your email sent for, for Meta. I think most importantly though, you don't have to install additional apps in Shopify. So this is not going to bog down your page load speed in any way because there's there's you you don't have additional apps to kind of uh, you know increase some of that load time. The the data layer is going to sit inside your theme and you're going to have customer events that are going to run as well and then everything is handled and managed inside Google Tag Manager. So this is a really robust way to tag your Shopify site. So I'll show you how I do that. So if we go over here to edit code, it's going to load the editor. Okay, I just want to start from scratch here. I'm going to open up theme.liquid. And I'm going to go to Google Tag Manager. So I'm just going to go tagmanager.google.com or do it how I did it, where I just searched Google Tag Manager. I'm going to create an account. Let's create it under this email. I'm going to call it uh, working. I'm going to put the date 25, 12. So this is totally up to date. Okay. Put the URL there, just to hit web for target platform, click create. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a Google Tag Manager container. Perfect. So I want to grab this code snippet, put it in my theme.liquid file. <clears throat> so under the head, it's going to sit there. I'm going to hit save. I'm just going to date this. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to type in actually do not remove. Do not remove. And the date is going to be today. Perfect. I like doing this. Just in case someone jumps in here, they can see the do not remove is exactly that. Don't touch this. Okay, so there's that. Save. Now I want to go to snippets and I want to create a new snippet file. So I'm going to call it data-layer.liquid. Perfect. And then on my desktop here, I've got my data layer files. Okay. So a lot of coding went in here. This was coding from scratch. None of this was ChatGPT. ChatGPT is helpful, but in this case, this is so um, you know specific for all the various data layers for those advertising platforms that I mentioned, it has to be very precise. So there it is, there's the data layer. Then you have to go back to your theme.liquid and then call it above Google Tag Manager. 
So you want to do something like this. You want to do this curly brace, and then you want to go percent. Let's say render. You gotta go, then you go with single quote, and then go data dash where. There it is there. I think we can just go like that. Yeah. And then, yeah. So if you hold control and hover over this, it'll bring you to the file. That's how you know we're referencing the data layer properly. Perfect. I'm going to hit save. And that's done now. So this code, we're done in this code area. We go back to our site, and then we can go to settings. And then I go to customer events. Then I add a custom a custom pixel. So I'm going to call it full ads slash analytics data layer. This is very very comprehensive again. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to that folder in my desktop here, and then I've got a customer events pixel. Put that here. What you got to do here in this customer events pixel is you got to add your GTM ID, so this new one that I created. So I'm just going to grab it from here. Boom. Copy. And I'm going to put it here. Boom. Oh, make sure this is well formed. There you go. Save. Connect. You got to connect your customer events code. Perfect. You can close it now. And then, remember I said the, the GTM container needs to be fully configured so that it kind of knows what to look for in the data layer. Well, right now it's empty, but I've got that fully configured data, uh, fully configured container right here. So in GTM, you go to admin, then you go to import container, choose container file. I've got a, that folder here, it's called comprehensive. So you go here, and then I've got it here, it's called gtm.json. I also have a, a consent mode version too, but I don't need to use that. Add to workspace. So look at all those tags. I was trying to list them off. It's difficult because there are so many. Curtail, Facebook Pixel, all the GA4 enhanced e-commerce events. Add payment info. View cart. Remove from cart. Yeah, anyway, all of them. Uh, Google Ads conversion tracking, Google Ads dynamic remarketing. Look at all of those events. So it's going to do remarketing full funnel. Hotjar, LinkedIn, Bing, Clarity, Pinterest, TikTok, Twitter X. Okay. That's Snapchat as well, but in the container there was a bit of an issue, so you have to kind of add those manually, but the data layer has it. Anyway, let's add uh, my measurement ID for GA4. I'm going to go here to variables. GA4 measurement ID. So I I've got these templated names. It just says update this. I usually update it with the actual measurement ID. See, and you can see it's it's being ref that measurement ID is referenced by all of these variables. Okay. Let's do the conversion ID for Google Ads. Okay, and you can find yours in goals and then where your purchase conversion is in Google Ads. You grab the conversion ID and then also get the conversion label. If you don't have this, you'll have to create one in Google Ads. The same goes for all the other tags in here. You see the reference is just the Google Ads conversion tracking purchase tag. It's the same with Facebook here. Uh, let's see, where is it? I just saw it. Oh, F FB pixel ID. So you need to grab your pixel ID, and then that automatically gets added to all of these. You see? View content, search, purchase, checkout, all pages, add to cart, 
at payment info. Let's just have a look here, right? So if we go to Google Ads conversion tracking purchase, you can see what I'm doing here. Conversion label, value, transaction ID, currency, and then user provided data. So that is going to be um, enhanced conversions. So I've got a customer array. No Google tag found in this container. So we're just going to create it. Yeah, AW. There you go. You can just create it like that. Now I can go ahead and publish this. Sing like no one is listening. Okay, good. Now we can test my data layer and I will show you what it looks like. So here are the products on my site, for example. How about this? Uh, you, you, could, you can buy this exact thing I'm talking about here. So here's the product, and then we can go look at the data layer. We go to inspect, and then go to console. And here I've got it separated out kind of by colors. So the, the uh, event here is view underscore item. Then you can expand on it. And you've got content IDs, you've got a curtail basket array, you've got the currency, Canadian dollars, an enhanced e-commerce array. You can see there it is. Let's get a look at all that. So it's pulling all of that with our pre-configured Google Tag Manager container. Pinterest items array. So theirs needs to be set up a little bit different. It needs to look like this. Product ID, product name, product price, product quantity. TikTok needs to be set up different than GA4. And there you go. And then you've got value here, which sits outside of the array. Again, we did all of this without installing any additional apps in Shopify. So you do kind of save on cluttering up your, I mean, you're not going to clutter up your Shopify. You're not going to increase load times. This is a very nice way to do it. For example, so here, let's add to cart. And then there's the add to cart um, uh, event. And then the same same data gets pushed. Content IDs for Facebook, I think. Pinterest, TikTok. Enhanced e-commerce is there again. Let's go to the checkout. Oops, I don't want to enter my, I'm going to just click on Checkup's Guest. There we go. So you've got a page view on the Checkout page. And you can see that the page location is very clean. We don't have that ugly kind of URL. Usually because this is sandbox, it's typically encrypted, but we're kind of dealing with that here. So it's not encrypted. It will show up nice in GA4 and wherever else. Anyway, you should see all sorts of different um, I don't want to pay, but data. Oh, uh, yeah, page view. All of the events should be here as well. You got to just kind of go through the process. Okay. All right, very good. The purchase event shows up, and then you'll see everything show up in GA4 as well. I want to show you, though. Um, I want to show you this in action. Mm 
Okay, let's do cash on delivery. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Let's click on cash on delivery. There we go, add payment info, and then we've got the purchase event. Aha, there we go. So that's our full purchase that happened here. And it's all in the checkout. And there's your purchase array. You've got Criteo and everything, sending data to every possible area. And here's the customer, um, customer array. So email, first name, there's the email, and it's hashed, last name, there's the email. So enhanced conversions is fully set up here. There's a transaction ID and the value. So there you go. Everything is working properly. Okay, any questions, let me know. There should be a link to this down below in the description area. But uh, hope you enjoy this. Have a good one. All right, bye-bye.